So you've probably noticed that even though everyone's talking about coming together in peace and unity, we are still seeing lots of people lashing out at other people for their wrong decisions, evil intentions, bad character, and whatever else upsets them. It might not be so bad if it were just the professional fighters, politicians and pundits, but this has clearly included lots of regular people, even lots of Christians, maybe even you or me. All sorts of words like anger, bitterness, and partisanship, even rage have been used to describe what is motivating people. But there is an even more fundamental feeling fueling much of this, and identifying that is important, not just for understanding it, but also for eliminating it. So what is driving all this outrage and aggravation? Fear. People are afraid. Afraid of getting sick from an unfamiliar and incurable disease. Afraid of dying. Afraid of losing people dear to them or losing their jobs, life savings, or homes. Afraid that the nation and society they know and love will never be the same again. But this isn't like being afraid of a bear you encounter on a hike or like being terrified when a criminal pulls a knife on you. In those situations, your fear is easily assigned and usually your options are clear. Run or scream or fight or scream while running and fighting. But with our current situation, it's hard to focus one's fear on a virus. There's nowhere to run to when there's really nothing to fight or scream at. So what does the human mind do? It finds some other place to focus that fear, especially someone to blame, so that something can be done. And that's what we see happening in our society now. Something is wrong and it just has to be the fault of our usual enemies so that we can feel that we're doing something about our fear by lashing out at them. It doesn't matter whether those people we're blaming are actually responsible, so we're not actually going to take the time to investigate whether they are. All that matters is that we knew they were bad before this crisis came, so they must in some way be responsible for how bad it has become. Now, does this help relieve the fear people feel? No, it actually makes it worse, because our outrage is matched by their outrage, and it all just gets compounded and upsets everything more, leading to more stress, more uncertainty, and more fear. It's a vicious cycle, and things like truth and wisdom peace and cooperation, and appreciation for good things and positive developments all get left behind exactly when they are needed most. So how do we break the cycle? Eliminate the fear that fuels it. Sounds simple, but can we do it? No, only the Lord can, and he's happy to. That's what Jesus went to the cross for which tells us that Christians have something to offer a frightened world. Love that drives out fear. God's love means there is no fear of punishment for sin because Christ paid for every sin with his blood. God's love means that there is no fear of death because Jesus defeated it and gives eternal life to all who trust in him. God's love means that his people don't have to fear injustice or abandonment or weakness or helplessness or being unheard or unseen or illness or any evil because he is always with us to bless us. And we reflect that love of God to a world of fear. We have been given the call and privilege to love our neighbor as we have been loved. And living a life without fear is one of the ways that we do good to all people. The witness that we offer to others, the witness of a life that takes God at his word and trusts him for everything, is a blessing to them. Not only do we show them the possibility of peace and joy while dealing with very real dangers and distress, but our fearless faith gives us exactly the objectivity and strength 
that are needed for sorting through and dealing with the issues of these troubled times for ourselves and for them. In 1 John 4.18, the apostle wrote, There is no fear in love, but complete love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who continues to be afraid has not been brought to the goal in love. So we we are going to watch our words, our posts, our likes, our forwards, and our retweets. No matter how upsetting things might be, we are not going to express or encourage fear because we have something so much better to offer the people around us. The love of God that drives out fear. Amen.